so that as you finish your kite, your kite modules, you can put together a tail, cut on 45 degrees, and then add together your modular cutouts and end up with a tail. And uh, make as many modules as you need to create as long of a tail as you want. So we do it by building on a board. I use poster board and I draw this pattern on the board all at 45 degree angles. Um, by measuring the size of the board, you can tell how many square inches you can get. You can actually calculate how long your kite tail is going to be from each piece of uh, each rectangle that you make. Um, this board uh, ends up being exactly uh, ten and a half feet of tail, I believe. So if we have a uh, uh, two foot lead in, we have a two foot tail coming out the back end. I like to do fork tails. Um, that should make almost a 15 foot tail when we're all done. So what we have here is an example of a tail I've made about a year ago. Um, this is all done with modular pieces, but it ends up so you can't see the, it's very difficult to see the joints where the kite was joined together with the modules. Uh, I put tape in here so you can see between the blue stripes there is one module. Between the tapes here is another module. But if I take the tape off, it's really hard to see where the pieces are joined together. The other thing that we're going to pick up from this class is my technique of using uh, a tacky spray on the poster board that enables us to place our pieces and hold it in place. And then uh, uh, once it's on the board, we can glue or hat, hot tack the pieces together and then pull the whole sheet up and move it to the sewing machine and sew away. Um, the way I originally learned how to do tails was to uh, just start sewing two pieces together, cut a line, sew another two pieces together, cut a line, and eventually you build up to a huge sheet and then you cut strips out of that. But you end up with a, a lot of waste, uh, a lot of small pieces uh, sewn into the tail, and uh, um, it takes about twice as long to do a tail as it takes using this technique. Building the kite, or in this case the tail, on the tacky board enables to get a very, very smooth kite when it's done. All of the pieces are laid flat and then secured into place before it's pulled up and put on the sewing machine. So you can be very guaranteed that the kite, after it leaves the sewing machine, is going to be flat. Uh, it's the same technique I used for doing this kite, for instance, where I have lots of curves, lots of places where the material could bunch up, but uh, it was all laid down and then glued in place before I peeled it up and moved it to the sewing machine. And this kite came out uh, very flat. It's, and uh, even over time, it's been up for about uh, a year, um, it stays flat. It's, uh, it's a good technique and uh, I'll use it for the rest of my days. So let's do some prep work now. Okay, we've gathered all our supplies we're going to need for constructing the tail. Um, the poster board. I like to keep an extra couple of pieces of poster board for sneaking in uh, cuts. You'll see how I use those in a minute. Um, some straight edges, metal, so you don't burn them. Uh, some fixident for the board. I like Loctite spray adhesive because it stays tacky for quite a while. Um, and for actually fixing the surface down, I like Guterman's HT2 or Fabri-Tac, which I can get locally. Uh, it's a little handier. Uh, Guterman's never fails, but it's a little harder to find. Uh, you'll need a hot cutter. Um, I use my $8 Weller 25 watt, and then, and then a bunch of material. Uh, my kite, uh, my tail today is going to be primarily blue and green, and I'll throw in some grays and whites. And I like to throw in like 20-25% black. I really think it makes it the tail uh, pop in the in the sky. It really uh, shows off the colors well. 
it's like a frame or something. I don't know how to describe it. Um, you'll need some pencils for marking on the paper eventually, on the tail, sorry. Um, I have a dark one, a charcoal gray and a white one. They're both uh, water soluble. I get them at uh, Quilting Supply. Uh, and then they work in mechanical pencils and uh, they uh, are washable. They, they go away if you put them in the wrong place or you want to get rid of the coloring. And uh, they're, pretty, they're very fine tipped also. I like that. Uh, other than that, you'll have the ubiquitous uh, blue tape. And I think we're ready to go. Now that we've got all our materials together, I've started laying out the tail pattern on the board. Um, I've started with a alternating green black stripe pattern. Uh, I found I found striping shows up pretty well on the finished tail. Um, I tend to do things in straight lines because then when it comes to add another piece, it goes on pretty easily. Um, and when I go to the edge, I over overshoot the edge by half three quarters of an inch. That way when I sew past the edge and then hot cut it off, I get a nice finished edge. Um, as we go along, you'll notice that every single edge on the tail is going to be hot cut. So there's, there shouldn't be any unraveling problems, no matter how old your material is. As we go along, I'm going to be hot tacking the pieces together. That way, when we're all done lay, laying everything out, we can peel the whole thing up and hopefully all those hot tacks hold and it'll be ready to go to the sewing table. Um, you can also use a little fabric cement in there if you're having material that's uh, uh, not wanting to stay together. So uh, I'll speed things up here and build some tail.
Okay, we've finished laying out all the pieces on the tail. Um, we're almost ready to peel it up and move it to the sewing machine. But the first most important part is to go back with a straight edge and my marking pencils and mark all these lines from the bottom of the cardboard here up to the material itself. That way when we come off the machine, I don't have to refit it back onto the board. I can just hot cut wherever those lines are. So let's try that now. Okay, I guess the uh, time has come to pull it up.
And there it is. All set to move to the sewing machine. Okay, we're ready to start sewing. Um, I'll insert a picture of my stitch. I like to use a, a stair stepper stitch. Um, and I like to use a very light tension. And as we're sewing, uh, as much as possible, start and stop outside the margins. And when you have to start and stop inside the margins, use a lock step. I'll speed things up and we'll get through this. I always miss some trim pieces, but uh, I'll pick them up later on in the construction. Now off to the tail. Okay, now that we have the modules, the body of the tail constructed, we're going to put together a, uh, the head and the split tails. So I've drawn out on the, the same board, I've drawn out some uh, strips that'll end up being the split tail. This top one that goes from three to three and a quarter inch, and another one exactly the same. And in between, I've got a uh, the, the lead, the head of the, the kite, or the tail, excuse me. Um, it's going to be four and a half at this end, so that it'll match up at the end of one of the modules in our kite body. And then at the end, it goes down to one and a half. And I'm uh, cutting out a little nylon piece. I'll insert a picture here. Uh, I just cut this out of the top of a, um, I think a yogurt container, a uh, coffee container to have the similar nylon top on it. And uh, it adds good stiffness and strength, um, and you can sew right through it. That's why I use that material. So let's piece together some, uh, some ripstop here and get going. Oh, you will notice that the tail and the head um, I'm going to make primarily black. I think that's a good accent. Uh, it really frames the, the rest of the, the tail. So I'll speed things up and get through this part.
Okay, this guy should be ready for the sewing machine too. Pretty simple. Uh, one more item we're going to need for the tail. A typical tail will shred if you just let it go crazy in the wind. So I've tried many different things. I'm trying a new thing this year. I'm taking a, like a six inch strip of material, cutting some slits down the middle of it, give it a twist, turn it over, and then uh, glue them together. And then I wrap this up a little bit and glue it. And I end up with a, like a fuzzy tail, but it won't flap in the breeze. So hopefully these at the tips of the two forked tails will slow things down and make the tip survive a season or two. Um, then if they do get shredded, you just snip them off and do it again and you're good for another season or two. Okay, we'll call that good and we're ready to cut them out. Now that we're off the sewing machine, we can cut out our modules. The lines are already drawn, so it should be a pretty quick process. And there's our collection of modules. And now we're ready to cut out the tail the same way. There's our pieces, all ready to assemble. Okay, I've taken all the pieces out to a sunny spot in my living room and placed them end to end and repositioned them and I think I have them in a good order now. I like how they blend into each other. The stripes are all spaced out. I think it looks good. So I'll just pick them up in this order, take them back to the sewing room and piece them together. Ready to start assembling the kite. I'm going to start off by getting the uh, leading end of the kite, or of the tail, sorry, and uh, trimming it off at 45 degrees.
We're going to get this pretty close because we're going to trim it one more time after we're all assembled. But for right now, we're just going to hot tack it as it is. Get it ready for the sewing machine. Okay, at this point, before we attach the forked tails to the rest of the tail, uh, we want to turn over this edge right here and hem it. And then turn this edge over here and hem it. So that when we, tend, when we attach everything to the kite, then we just have to do the outside hem. And the inside hems will all, already be finished. Okay, this is a good time to introduce my hemming tool. It's a small piece of uh, nylon. It's got some edging on it. And what I'm going to be doing is pushing the material up against that just before it slides into the needle. So I have my little measurement tool here. I'm going to set for about an eighth inch. nice straight edge. Voila! Okay, first of all, now that these are all hemmed up, let's cut them off at 45 degrees. Get them ready to attach to the rest of the tail. Okay, all ready for the sewing machine again. I'm going to do these one at a time and uh, do it in fast motion, but you get the idea. Okay, now that we have the tail all sewn together, we're going to do some preparation. Um, we want to eventually edge the tail from one tip of the fork tail all the way up to the toe point and then around back down the other side to the other tip of the other fork tail. So it'll all be one continuous sew all the way around the tail. Um, first step I'm going to do is take where the toe point meets uh, the module meets the first other module of the body of the tail. Um, those corners where it turns are a little bit sloppy. So we're going to take 
our hot edge, our hot tip, and just snip off and smooth that whole corner. Smooth this one also. That'll make uh, the edging much easier to do right there. Also, if any of your other joints where the modules come together are a little sloppy, now's the time you can trim them. Uh, the other preparation is we're going to, I've already glued on my uh, reinforcement piece on the toe point. We'll fold those over in preparation for sewing and I'll probably just glue those in place to make it easy to uh, get around that corner. And then down on the, uh, the tips of the fork tail, I'm going to snick those off, just hot cut them off, make them nice and neat, and then uh, glue those guys in in preparation for that final edging. So let's do those first. Once these guys are set, I'm going to run down and just um, fold all the edging all the way around. And uh, after that, it'll be ready for the sewing machine. So here we go. I'm going to start on this end of the tail, the fork tail I should say. Go up this side, turn the corner at the other end, and then it should come down and finish right there. After that, we just have the uh, bridle point to finish up and we'll have a tail. So uh, off to the sewing machine. Okay, back on the sewing machine, I'm going to set up my straight edge sewing uh, guide. There, that ought to put the zigzag right in the middle of the hem, the edging. little cleanup to do and that looks good. I didn't check my bobbin so it's a good thing I uh, am building a short tail. Okay we've got the tail all sewn up. Looks pretty good. Uh, the last step Let's put a string in at the toe point. For that I use my uh, fine woodworking tool. Hot cut through.
And there's the tow line that's ready to go. If you look how the tail turned out, some of the, the edging in here, you won't see loose threads. Um, everything's cut off nice. All the edges are hot cut. This should last years and years. Before I let you go, one quick aside. At the beginning of this project, we guesstimated that this tail would be just under 15 feet. And I just measured it and it came out to 14 feet, two inches. So uh, just to show that this technique uh, uh, measure, it, it'll predict how long your tail is going to be. Worked pretty good for us. So now I'll see you on the beach. Is wow. my sound back? Wow, yes. I got to say, that was an exercise in uh, uh, patience because this is the first time I've done any video production and it, uh, it's time consuming. It paid off. Excellent production. Thanks. Professional work. So I uh, talked about the tacky spray a little bit, and I want to put in one more, one more uh, plug for Krylon. It looks like the best alternative uh, if Loctite is, has indeed changed their formula. Any other questions? Hey, Chris. Yeah. This is Lindsay. How are you? I'm Long good. Time. Hey, um, so in my screen printing days, um and which i still have involvement in uh anyway um uh, i use a uh, uh sprayway uh their uh contact cement that's used for the platen for t-shirts and it has uh, uh a good tack light tack though but uh it it doesn't transfer to the fabric so you know when you're screen printing the t-shirts it, it it you never get it on the back of the fabric uh, anyway, and I bought it on Amazon, and it's like I don't know, six, seven bucks a can, something like that for a big size can. But it uh, it really works well. It's called Sprayway, and um, it's just a uh, for the uh, t-shirt uh, platen adhesive. Uh, I also use it when I uh, on a, on the uh, boards that we're when we're cutting uh, light stuff on the laser, too, um, fabric and stuff because I can dust it on, stick it down, and nothing transfers. It works really well right so but anyway but yeah yeah uh ron gibbon also uh used to use loctite and now he's on to your krylon same thing so the loctite i really liked because it would literally stay tacky for three weeks yeah it was weird yeah yeah and and the uh the 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 t-shirt uh, platen adhesive uh stays tacky as long as it doesn't get dusty from my cabinet shop laying around you know right so, but uh, yeah, hey, uh, awesome job. I thought that Nick uh, had uh, edited your uh, video, but good on you. Uh, I've done a few and it, it it is time consuming and there's an art, so. So, so, are you, uh, so are you no longer using Loctite because you think it's, it's um, uh, they've changed their formula or you think you just got one bad can and we should try it? don't know yet. I was going to actually contact them and see if they've changed it. It might just be one bad can. Uh, Bob Wendt has raised his hand. I think he has a question. Yeah, Chris, in uh, uh, real time, how long did it take you to make that tail? Oh, it's hard to say because I'm doing production, video production around it. I guess uh, four or five hours maybe. That's not bad. That's no, not bad. But I'm going slow. Uh, one of the things about doing the video production, is especially when you're cutting it, you only get one take. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be really careful. <laughs> All right. And you didn't have any problem with uh, the, the mat board that you used underneath it burning with your hot cutter? No, never do. 
Yeah, you just I if I think if you set the hot cutter down for a long enough time, you could get it to char. But uh, like you could see in the production, I'm I'm sliding the cardboard under it and cutting right over other parts of the tail, and I, it never the heat just doesn't go through. It's a good insulator. Okay, and you used the little pencil cutter. Uh, do you have any experience with the the big HSGM hot knife uh, process? Uh, would that burn it or not? I don't know. I think it, it, if you move fast enough, I don't think there'll be a problem. But I, uh, uh, Gary's shaking his head. Yes, I agree. Uh, that's overkill. That's a that's a sledgehammer instead of a little, you know, one for for Brad nails. Uh, you know, well, like <laughs> I say to customers and and other people, finesse is not just shampoo. <laughs> All right, uh, to right? second Lindsay. I'll yeah, still say if you move fast enough, you'll be okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, light touch <laughs> and fast. Now, and, and you're using a sharp point on your on your on your tip, right? Sharp-ish. Sharp-ish. Yeah, yeah. You dull it just a little bit, but it's not a blunt tip. And no. uh no. And and so it's not cutting into the board. It's you ease it just a little bit, but you know, and you're using a stainless steel uh straight edge. Yep, your straight edges are stainless steel, so stainless steel will not pull the heat out of the out of the tip where aluminum will. So right. don't use aluminum because stainless steel doesn't uh, transfer heat. I do have a big uh, aluminum uh, straight edge, and I just slap a little uh, blue tape on it. Right. Yeah. Break the insulation. Yeah. Just insulate it. Yeah. A little bit of insulation. Yeah. Right. So if I need to do that full four foot cut, I I can do that. It looks like I'm going to have to eat my words about uh, blue tape. You certainly put it together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for 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 every person that swears at it, there's five people that swear by it. Um, hey, Mitch. The HSG cutter with both yeah. tips. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> on poster board, no. Uh, on the other hand, poster board reinforced with the aluminum furnace tape all the way around it no problem but on top yeah, of it yeah so we're not making sales here i mean if you're doing big stuff you know and you need a you know like uh rod thrall when he's making a 200 square foot jordan or something you know and you got or 400 square foot jordan you got 20 foot seams you know you need the you need it to maintain heat all the way through so but uh yeah if I might speak up, what I really liked is the um, um, randomness of the colors that you picked out, even you know, with a little bit of care. But for the most part, you're just slapping them down, trimming them off, and you're going. You're not overthinking the process. But you've done it enough that I think you can really visualize what you're going to end up with. But still, it's a it's a great class for breaking that uh, thinking outside the boxes thing. You know, as far as um, people initially that have to stay in the lines or have to pre-think everything. And I think this is a great concept for getting the brain to think a little differently. And um, I want to take your class because I think I need that. I really like the idea of using a lot of different random colors because that way you can use the, the tail with multiple kites, which is a really neat idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah, another one of my favorite phrases, stealing it from Bull Durham, is don't think, just throw. Either. Okay. Hi, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is presenting. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, if nice. I could, I really I nice. Could I'll raise my hand. Um, could you tell me what kind of cutter you're using? Uh, um, hot cutter, sorry. I'm embarrassed to say because it's like an $8 Weller welding iron. Uh, hey, that's. Yeah, soldering iron that I've just <laughs> trimmed the edge, I've filed down the edge on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So not a really heavy duty. That's what you guys were talking about. I was just trying to, yeah. Now, Thank you. The 25 watt, nothing. 
Yeah, Amy, I have one that I'm using now that automatically turns off when it's not jostled for a while um, after I've burned out some after I forgot to turn it off. So that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I have some, I have like four cutters and the cheapest one is the one I use 95% of the time. That's awesome, thank you. <clears throat> it's I've, really uh, beautiful. I've I saw the kite through that you a couple of the $35 tips, not the tool, just the tips from the professional soul maker places. So guess what? I use the $12 word burner from Jones. That's that's my go-to. Yeah, it's just a question of comfort. And make sure you get uh, use a uh, a stand, you know. Uh, uh, hang on. Just, you can, you know, make sure you get one of these. So it's just, a, you put the pencil, you know, your soldering iron in there, it's protected, it, it's weighted, it sits on your table and fabric. And, you know, there it sits in like that. Hey, Lindsay. Yep. Heat rises. It, what's that? That's getting hot air balloon pilot. Yeah. Heat rises. So there are those of us who refuse to put our hot tools pointed down. In any way, shape, oh, yeah, or fashion, no, yeah. we, we no, will. No, no, no. We I know, will I know. But it, does, it doesn't get hot because it's because the uh, the the spring around it dissipates heat. This is from a this is from a uh, soldering station for electronics. So yeah. it works. These work great. Great theory. The I haven't had a problem with the handle overheating with holding it at forty five degrees. Oh no, no. The, the handle the handle will never overheat in in that because it. Uh, so. Soldering got mine mounted up on my pegboard, so it's just always, yeah, well, always the there. Tables are designed I to have PC work that PC way. PC holes that hold the tail, the toe, perfectly vertical. Oh, yeah, when I actually solder, because I do a ton of soldering, but when I actually solder, you have to have it pointed down like that, otherwise you'll lose the silver on the tip, and then it will ruin the tip, and then it's only good Agreed. for cutting out right. But soldering pencils are designed to work that way. They they moderate the temperature of the tip, not just the whole thing. And the handle is insulated from the rest of the body. So control your hots. It's like control your sharps. If you get that soldering pencil rolling down your desk, it can cause much more damage in seconds than putting it in the damn holder. Chris, there's some questions in the comments. Maybe you could address those. Where am I? Thank you for sharing my pencil. It really is a genius technique, Chris. You're such an artist. I'm just awed. I mean, you just can't. You came up with this thing, and I it blows me away. Yeah, I loved Ron's uh, Ron Button's tales, but they his technique was just super time consuming. It was just crazy. Uh, hot cutting and the thread I use. It's a polyester thread, uh, just Guterman's. Uh, you could use a piece of laminate. Um, you can draw on that, I assume. So that would work. The only problem with laminate is that it's always got an inherent bow to it from it being rolled in storage most of the time. And it and it maintains it. But, oh. you, but you could glue it down to a, to another board and then you could have a permanent tack board, which would work really well. And uh, if you're ever out to Oregon uh, coast, you can come by my shop. I have probably a uh, thousand square feet of uh, old colored laminate in the rack up to 12 feet long. So if you need it, I've got it. It may be pink or mauve, you know, but it's there. I'm just going to jump in really quick to say that uh, I got to head out and uh, get dinner started and 
also get stuff ready for the next few weeks. Um, but this session will keep running. You guys keep talking. It'll keep recording. And it doesn't stop until the last person leaves. So feel free to keep this conversation going. Uh, I'm going to hop out. But I believe Spence is somewhat still online as a, as a co-moderator. So if anything happens and everything crashes, he might be able to help. But yeah. All right. You guys have a good one, and I will talk to you all in a bit. Thank you, Nick. Nick, Nick are you going to post that video? Uh, which uh, video? The one we just watched. Uh, well, well, if uh, Chris is okay with me posting it to the Fortuna Found YouTube, I'm happy to. I can do that. Awesome. All right, Thanks I will so work with you to Nick. make sure it gets this it gets added great. on there. Fabulous. All right. You. Yeah, you guys keep talking. I just wanted to, to interject and say I'm I'm gonna step out right now. So uh, go for it. So Bye. For it. You know what? Uh, I know you're a busy gal and, and you put a huge amount of work in. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, it's all the presenters' work. You know how this goes. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Bye, guys. Did we go I'm back? I'm just super thankful. Oh. Can we go back to the comments questions so that we can get our questions answered and get and be done? Oh, I have to back up, I guess. Yeah, because cool. my feed, do you have the dimensions for the diagonal spacing and the overall box dimension? How wide is your tail? Oh, I, I made it four and a half inches. Uh, it can be anything you want, of course. <laughs> It's the nice thing about tails. It's not, you're not really fixed. Uh, the 45 degree cut, I think, is the most important part. Because then you get to uh, put your pieces together in a modular fashion and uh, make them look good. Even though they're randomly per, uh, manufactured. And then what? You just get a whatever size poster board you can find and draw your box in like an inch from the edge? Yeah, exactly. I've made big blocks before by just uh, taping two of those poster boards together. Just made one big one and cut strips out of that. I found the little pieces uh, are actually easier to work with, so I, I've gone back to just using one piece of poster board. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, one thing I didn't talk about that might be important for a first timer is uh, when you're crossing the lines that are on the board that you're eventually going to cut down, you don't want a, uh, a joint running parallel to that because that's where it's going to get folded over and uh, it makes for an awkward edge. So when you're coming up to the edge of, uh, that you're going to be cutting through, kind of cross it not at right angles but at a, at a steeper angle. Does that make sense? And uh, if you're going to end up in a joint where you have like three, four, maybe five pieces joined together in one place, don't put that on a on a place you're going to cut through and have to, have to fold that over because that just gets to be you. You can do it, but it's it just slows you down. Somebody in the um, comments uh, asked whether you could um, post the, the um, plan for your edge your edging tool your edge guide yeah i can probably give that uh to nick also Chris, oh, there's not that much to it it's just a, a straight edge i and i printed it out of nylon so i could fit it on my bendy machines or put it on my uh uh table i have done uh, one for a curved edge that I was able to 3D print, and then I'm cutting that same edge on a kite, and then I was able to feed it through uh, the guide. That was kind of a trick. But for straight, for tails like this, the straight, just any straight edge will do. Well, my wife's coming back with dinner in about 15 minutes, so there's going to be a hard end to this. <laughs> so come up with some questions.
So what would you say would be the main difference between what you learned from Ron Button and what you came up with? I mean, how was his more difficult than, than your simplified version? Oh, he was double sewing every seam. Ah. Folding and sewing and then folding over and sewing again. So he was building it to last forever. Or just yeah. to put it in the comments. <laughs> All right. All right. Also, we talked about hot cutting uh, modern materials. In an earlier session, someone was talking about modern materials just don't fray. A lot of the scraps that you're going to have sitting around are not going to be that new, and they might be crappy material that will fray. So if you hot cut all the edges, you won't have that problem. Mitch, I see your mouth moving, but you're on mute. What do you think about edge binding as opposed to holding the edge? What was that? I'm sorry. Is there, is there some advantage or disadvantage to edge binding to nylon edge binding detail rather than just holding it open? Uh, more bother, I guess. It's a tail. <laughs> <laughs> Very much <laughs> work. Well, plus a single folded hem is pretty easy to do, and 50 feet in the air, nobody's going to see the variation, right? We'll just get it as you. <laughs> That's okay. And the okay. edge is hot cut. Was on your computer You're not going to have bare, bare material there. Where'd it go? There it is. What's this from Amy about good to see your faces and then she has weight? You talking about how much weight have I gained? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was talking about the binding. You're adding more weight oh. to the table. If you maybe, if you were that was my question. Would it would it add weight to it? No. <laughs> well, if it's a I, tail and you, and no you need weight. Off, so <laughs> yeah, this is Fun. Do you think we can build a 200 foot tail? <laughs> I don't know. It's gorgeous. That's very when pretty. You, when you do them a, a piece at a time, 10 feet at a time, I've done a couple of tails where I transition, where I'll build one that's primarily reds, another one that's purples, and another one's in blue, and blue, and then I'll intermix the colors, and then you can combine them uh, into a graduated tail, even though it's all scraps comes out pretty nice. I like the way, I like what Rhonda said about, you know, just this takes away some of that, it has to be this way or it has to be that way. To me, that's where I I take forever to build. And and so I, I, I don't build a lot of pieces because it just takes me, I have to think about it and look at it 20 times and, you know, and, and so I really like the idea of that, just go for it and do it and um, yeah. And I love the pieces that in the tail, I don't know if anybody else noticed that, that some of those pieces look like they're part of a star. I uh, had some leftover pieces that I stuck in there. I like that. I really like that. An, an occasional shape like that in there that's cut, but it, it resembles something. So it's nice. I like it. They disappear in the sky, I have found, mm -hmm. and they're not okay. worth the time to sew around. Right. The striping I, I see. The one thing I'm thankful for, for for um, for for our remote meeting today, is that Rhonda cannot go through the garbage cans and bring home more <laughs> scraps of fabric. She has enough to make probably four thousand feet of tail, I think. Wow, <laughs> Rhonda, I'll send you some of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I mean seriously, you know, I mean I hassle her all the time. You everybody knows that, you know. I mean we're so, but anyway, uh, but because of the use of scrap, psychologically, you're not spending any more money. You've already spent the money or somebody else has spent the money and given you the, the scraps. So just throw it out there. You know, I mean, put some thought into it, of course, but, you know, don't overthink it because this is a really good exercise into freeing your, 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 hang on there 
freeing oh. your, your, your spirit. I was working on a project. So anyway, um, but yeah, it, it, that's the best way to do it is just get rid of your inhibitions and, and uh, use scrap. You do use a considerable amount of thread. It's surprising. I've got, I did that 70 footer tail and I like to do the uh, edging in one long, one long shot and I put a brand new bobbin in and I didn't make it all the way around. <laughs> I make a lot of bags out of scrap and find I spend five dollars on thread to save five dollars on fabric. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't go into the landfill. Yeah, yeah it kept me busy. <laughs> I do have people ask me for kites, and I just don't want to build kites for people because you can't ask for how much it's worth, really. So I, I can give away tails. <laughs> I'm just going to say goodbye to everybody. It was great to see you all and be well. And thank you, Chris. That was amazing. I really like, really enjoyed that. It was good. Thank you. If, you Donna, come back yeah, if Donna's still on, or Donna, I'm going to watch the recording because I wanted to see your class too and I missed it. But. Yep, I'm still on here. Watch away. I will, for sure. I'm, I'm excited. So, all right. We'll see some of you tomorrow, probably. Bye, Amy. Bye. Thank you, Chris. It was a great presentation. And you've got me thinking about how not to think now. <laughs> and it's good to see all the faces of all my friends that I haven't seen for years now. Thank you. I was convinced you had that not thinking thing down pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Thanks, Chris. And good night to all you uh, lovely people. I'll see you tomorrow, I hope. Okay. 8.30 bright and early, Mitch. That's bright and early for me. Uh, oh, no, that'll only be 10.30 for you. So that's 10.30 out here. Oh, yeah. 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 Good night, all. I'm going to be doing CAD and 3D printing. So, Chris, you going to come on tomorrow morning? I can, yeah. Might even have some useful. So, all right. Might have what? No, I said might even have some new stuff. Oh, okay. So, all right. Night, folks. So, Jan was yeah. saying, going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say thank you as well for a great... Great presentation. Worth staying up till three a.m. for. Because I know that's what I was going to say. You're 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 burning daylight now. You're about ready oh, to yes, wake up. Absolutely. So, but uh, but I'm I'm spending some quality time with the with the cats here. So. Uh -huh. Oh, good. So. Wow. Uh, three a.m. I don't know yeah. what that looks like anymore. <laughs> that happens to me just about every day. So it's not you know. Well, well, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. is not you know that unusual for me. So, 3 a.m. on a Saturday is not a catastrophe. But uh, it's, it's going to be worse tomorrow evening because that's on a Sunday evening where I have to get up in the morning. But uh, I'll be there. See what happens. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Or today for you. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> At least, at least for me, it starts like what is it, three o'clock in the afternoon, not a, not at eight eight a.m. So, oh, 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 maybe she didn't send it. Anyway, uh, I was I, I, find, I, I was going through. Let's see. Oh. I'll, I'll I'll drop off. I'm okay, running low we'll on talk to you later. By now, so. See you. Thanks for staying up. Seems love.